I ended up moving to Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I was supposed to be staying with Doe, but things didn't really work out well with that. So I ha somehow I ended up staying with my brother-in-law's brother. Uh, but things weren't copacetic there with him because uh, <laughs> he ended up getting evicted. And that kind of had bad things for me because I didn't even get, to get a ch chance to get a job, to get a place to live, anything. So I remember he only had like two weeks left in the apartment. I finally got a job like a couple weeks before, or maybe a week before that. And uh, I had like a little bitty check, so I'm looking for a room or something that I can stay in. I ended up getting a room uh, with some roommates or something like that. And I stayed there for a couple of months, and, and we just didn't see eye to eye either. Uh, so I ended up leaving from there, but before that happened, the car broke down on me. Like, the car <laughs> just gave up on me, man. So I, you know, I ended up getting the car. Everything was just going horrible, man. When I first got th there to Atlanta, everything was going horrible everything was going south for me man everything was just um bad plus i was having to take a 700 mile trip from atlanta to chicago every month to go see my parole officer and i'm trying to hide it from him that this is what i'm doing because i'm knowing that he's not gonna be good with this you know what i'm saying the man just gave me a bone by taking me off of house arrest and here it is I'm running to different states and stuff like this is while I will parole like he's not going to be happy with this. Genesis arrived in Atlanta Georgia in July of 2007. Not quite sure where to start and struggling to keep his personal life intact Genesis stumbled upon the right person at the right time. At work one time uh, I met this guy named Rasha, Rasha Lewis and he used to work at MTV and uh, I didn't notice yet but you know, we ended up having a conversation and one thing led, one conversation led to another and we ended up there about him talking about how he used to be in MTV. And I was like, wow, straight up. And he was like, yeah. And so he was telling me all about the experiences that he had with the different artists and with working with Sway and, and working with the, at the production team and about the business and this, that and the other thing. And we became good friends. And uh, he invited me one time to come down to a studio that was on the west side west side you know what i'm saying of atlanta and he said hey man why don't you come down so i went down and the, the name of the studio was called caboose he was working with an artist and the artist they were trying to do like a little piece on him a documentary on the little airbrushing that he does that he does you know what i'm saying and while he was working on that there also was like a studio on the upstairs and and the guys upstairs had like a video um editing department and i thought it was pretty dope so I, I, you know, I went up there and I talked to the administrator of, of the place and I was like, yo, can I get a place here? And he was like, yeah, not a problem, man. He was like, it's going to be this much rent a month. And I'm like, cool, not a problem because I got a gig. He's like, all right. So while I was at the caboose, I had met this, uh, this rap group that was from San Antonio. And uh, the rap group was there to audition for uh, the people that was upstairs or the guy that was upstairs that was doing like a lot of the video editing and stuff like that and doing a lot of video work so um because he was from texas too so they was guys and whatnot so um i go up you know go upstairs and whatnot to meet them and i'm sitting there and i you know i'm telling them that i'm making beats and i'm listening to their music and i'm grooving out you know to their stuff and they grooving the mind and um there was this one kid man it was he was in the back and he was quiet he never says much and uh they put this other CD on and the CD was like some R&B stuff. And I'm like, damn, yo, which one of y'all do that? And they point at him. And I'm like, damn, that's coming out of you? You know what I'm saying? Like, he did not sound like he looked. The sound that was coming out of him, so the whole situation was is that I was looking at the situation like, okay, well, um, I need y'all to come downstairs because I want y'all to hear some of these beats or whatever. And uh, tell me if y'all like some of these beats, and then we could we could do something else. Like we can't record here because I don't have all my equipment and stuff that I want to yet to set this thing up. But we can come upstairs and record upstairs, and I can track the beats out for you. So they was like, all right, cool, not a problem, blah 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 blah. So when next time they they came back to the studio, he came back. But they went upstairs. They was interested in doing a little uh, TV show and stuff like that that they was trying to work on. And he came downstairs though because he was into the music. So he comes downstairs we listen to some beats and uh i played this one particular beat and he was like whoa 
And I had meant the beat for somebody else, but he was like, man, yo, I got a song wrote for that. And I'm like, all right, let me hear it. It was a sunshiny day, no clouds out that I can recall. Like this. And we were chilling on the porch, playing bones when the drama popped off. Oh, shit. It's what that old lady said when she ran and I seen something fall. He's hit. It was my homie, he was dead in my mind. I said, now nah, I seen it all. I'm talking about perfect marriage. Perfect marriage. And I'm like, yo, we gotta record this. And he was like, for real. But I ain't got a second verse written for it. So he went back that night, wrote a second verse, which gave me an opportunity to track the beat out. Next time he came over, we went upstairs, recorded the song, bam. Cause busting ass all day and making minimum wage and putting food on my plate, I need a big break. I wish I had me a plane and I would catch it today. You wouldn't see me tomorrow, cause I would fly away. I'm getting out of the game. When he was concerned about copyrights, so was I. So we went, did the copyright thing, not a problem. So I'm like, okay, let's push this. He was like, all right, cool. I got to go back to San Antonio for a minute. And then when I get back, we doing it. I'm like, cool, because I got to go to Chicago for a minute because my parole. And then when we come back, we're going we gonna to hit the road with this. I went to Chicago, I, you know, because my, my second child was born. And then when I got back, he was still in San Antonio. So make a long story short, he was so we never could connect again we never could cross paths to get the thing done anymore because he was either doing something where it was promotions or shows or something like that and i was you know running around trying to at least keep a job and build a studio and doe was moving down there so i was doing some stuff with doe and we just could never connect right so we lost touch for about a couple months like five six months then i ended up finding him on myspace I find him on MySpace, and when I find him on MySpace, um, I hit him up. I say, yo, man, I found you. What's, what's good? What do you want to do with the song? He's like, I don't want to do nothing with the song. I said, what? He said, I don't want to do nothing with the song. I, you got to be crazy, dog. He's like, I don't want to do nothing with the song, man, because that's not how I want to present myself to the industry. I'm like, yo, you don't want to present yourself like that? Like, what's wrong with that? And he was like, yo. That's just not how I want to present myself to the industry, man. I'm doing some other stuff with uh, Slugger Jones now, and I'm I'm doing some stuff for Jamie Foxx's new album and whatnot. I'm, I'm in another lane. I'm doing blah, 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 blah. I'm like, yo, but that's a hit, though. You want to leave that to the side or whatever? And I, I guess maybe I was more passionate about it because it was me and it was my beat or whatever, but the song was a hit. There was a dude from L.A. that one of his homeboys had bought from, from, uh, from L.A., man, and the dude heard this the, the song and we talking about a hardened criminal here was in tears when he heard the joint a hardened criminal man was loving this like crying about the song and um one of his homeboys he knew the cat you know and he he didn't want to do nothing with it you know and ever since then we ain't we haven't done no work we haven't talked that is what it is you know what i'm saying down the drain but i i felt like damn when it's in my hands, it's just gone. Once again, life had dealt Genesis another difficult blow, but luck found its way back to him. From, you know, I, things was constantly got rough for me, man. I, I thought everything was going to go good because of the simple fact that, that the people that they had walking through there they had celebrities coming through there. They had people that was really on something walking through there. They had managers and agents and stuff like that that walked through there. People that were really in the industry that was making, making some moves. Uh, but I just didn't, it didn't take off for me. Like it wasn't the right situation for me because I was a beginner. I didn't have any equipment. I, you know, I'm telling people I make beats, but you know, I'm, I don't have a large catalog like Doe would have. I'm telling people that I rap, but I don't have a large catalog like people thought I would have. And I don't have a name. I don't have my own studio. So it was like, what can people do with me? You understand what I'm saying? So the situation just didn't really go like I had thought that it had, it, would, it would have went. Genesis was eventually evicted from the caboose, but a good friend by the name of Francis Wall introduced him to an experienced cameraman and entrepreneur, Thomas B.J. Williamson. 
and after one meeting, the prince was given another shot at making his dream come true. And he quickly seized the opportunity by setting up his own recording studio in BJ's loft and started producing and engineering for other artists. There was a video shoot that went on there. They used to do a lot of video shoots there at the caboose. And uh, the guys that were there was Rock City. I didn't know who they were at first until I met them, right? And they was doing a video shoot for um, a joint they called Stop Lying. So uh, I had made some new beats and stuff like that, and they were there, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm do something. I gotta make something happen, right? So I go get a CD, and I come out, but I'm waiting for the right opportunity moment because I don't. They, they people are telling me Divine Stevens is there, and they're telling me all these different important people from Convict Music is. There. I've never met these people. I've never even seen these people. So I don't know who's who or whatever, whatever's whatever. I ended up taking it to a guy named uh, Damani. He was. Uh, one of the co-managers of Rock City on the management team for Rock City and he had done some work for uh, you know Murder Inc and had done some work for Columbia and also had done some work for you know Beyonce and the Destiny Child when the Destiny Child movement was going on so I ended up giving him my CD with my raps on there my, you know, my newest mixtape the 2007 Angel with a Dirty Face and also I gave him a CD with the beats on it all right, so what he did was he took it, he said, man, I'm going to listen to this, blah, blah, blah. But I had been there for a couple of months, and people had been telling me they were going to do that, and nobody ever really listened to it, so I didn't bank on it. But I was like, okay, this can this can work. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, it might work. He might call me back. It just so happened I met him on a set of uh, our first video for Rock City, which is Stop Lying, this little YouTube joint, nothing spectacular, like the Lusin' It video. Y'all need to be voting for that video, too. But, um... <laughs> Met him on that set, and he just happened to give me some music that day. And like me, I went back home, and usually I don't listen to nothing, but I just, you know, I was just chilling in the crib, popped into music, and was like, yo, I can fuck with this cat. Like, this, this some different shit, this some shit that can go. Damani was like, hey, listen, why don't you uh, work for us on the street team for Rock City? And I said, cool. You know, I ain't, I ain't got nothing else better to do. Let's rock. So I met this guy Jeff through BJ, right? BJ comes upstairs and um, he comes to get me and say, hey, I got somebody for you to meet. So uh, I go downstairs, it's Jeff. So we meet, you know, he wanted to do some work in the studio or what have you. So I'm like, all right, cool. I give him my price. He tell me the dates and we, we set it up. So we start working and he had this one song that he wanted one of his friends to sing on. So I'm like, cool, just swing swing on through and let's, let's get it done. So uh, he brings her in and it's T-Kiss, right? Uh, so I start working with her, uh, with them, and I noticed she had a really beautiful voice. So I'm like, yo, I needed some hooks to be done, because I'm working on Angel with a Dirty Face Volume 2 now. And I'm like, yo, man, I want to step my game up a notch and have some R&B hooks on there and, and, and do some write some songs. Because remember, I, I've been writing songs when I, when I was in jail, I was writing R&B songs. So I got like a catalog of stuff that I want to start putting together now. I'm producing and making beats now that I'm doing... R&B tracks and I want to release them too so uh, you know he had always told Jeff had already told me like yo man anybody that I swing through here you you could talk to him and holler at him and get him you know do what you got to do man as far as the music is concerned I'm like cool so when I heard her sing I was like damn that's what's up so I asked him first out of respect like yo is it alright if I ask her and he's like man do what you do so I, she, I go back in the studio and I ask him like yo you you doing anything? And she was like, nah, not really. I, she'd been in the situations. She was telling me she had been in situations where she was around people in the industry and uh, they was jerking her around and whatnot. She had wrote some songs for some pretty well-known people and they was jerking her around and they ain't never gave her no credits, no money for it, blah, 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 and whatnot. And I told her, hey, look, I'm not no big guy. I'm trying to make it just like you. So it's like I have nothing to take anything from you or whatnot like that. Like that's that's not that's not my mission. My mission and my goal right now is to get them some music done. And I was like, if you up with that, we we can, you know, set a time and meet. She was up with it. We met or what have you. But the day that we met, we actually I'm thinking that the day that we met was we were gonna come work. Cause I played her some beats the, the first day I met her and she liked them. So I'm like, cool. So I'm thinking 
that we're going to meet and do some music. I don't want to meet and talk. We already talked about it. Right? So she gets there and we uh, I put a beat on. We talked a little bit, but then I put a beat on and then she started writing. And when she finished writing it, we went and recorded it. You know what I'm saying? And it was it was gorgeous. Like um, the name of the song is called Take Me Away. And she was expressing to me that she wanted to write the song about a girl who's going through a lot in her life, been through some stuff, and not necessarily liking her situation right now, and she's wishing to get away. She's too young to have a baby. Mm -hmm. Ain't listen what a mama said. song 95% I helped a little bit and coached here and there but she basically wrote that that piece by herself and I just did the track we went in and recorded it and there you had it Halfway into the mixing period, she decides uh, that she wants to get copyrights, right? But it didn't happen until after I started bringing people into the studio because she had a really bad confidence situation. Like she, her confidence was like zero. You know what I'm saying? Um, even though I was coaching her, her confidence level was still zero. And then only for me to get a, a whole project done with her, I have to, you know, bring this confidence level up to where it needs to be in order to make sure that the songs are of quality to match the tracks. You know what I'm saying? Or else I'm wasting my time and she's wasting hers. So, like, I had to get a confidence level up. So I'm bringing people in to tell her, like, hey, look, they like your stuff. Like, I'm bringing random people through the studio. Yo, listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. And everybody loved it. And she was cool with that. It was building her confidence up. And I'm thinking everything all good. Until one of Jeff's buddies was about to do a, a video for him. So he swings by the studio to listen to some of the music that I've mixed for him. And he Jeff tells him, hey, man, why don't you play that song that you and T-Kids did? Put me on the spot. So I'm like, all right, cool, not a problem. I'll play the song. So I play the song, and the guy fell, falls in love with the cut. So he tells me, hey, man, you want to do a video for that? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> all day. Let's let's do the video for that, right? So we get discuss, discussing the video or what have you, and I call her out of respect for her. Like, listen, this guy wants us to shoot a video, blah, 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 blah. What do you want to do? You know what I'm saying? You want to do that, or you just want to wait till the project's done? Because, you know, we put this out, and it blows up, and we got nothing else to back it up, and you end up on one hit wonder. So you want to just go ahead, and, and we talked about it, discussed it, and she was down with the video. But two days later, she calls me, saying, hey, listen, I want copyrights. I want to get copyrights on this stuff. And I'm thinking, all right, you know what I'm saying? Not a problem. You can get the copyrights. It's not a, that's not an issue with me. I want you to protect your stuff because I'm going to protect mine. But then, since you went that route with it, then 
okay, let's let's do this agreement. You know what I'm saying? To where if the cop you go, we copyright is one thing, but then when you receive funds or reimbursement when we start selling this stuff, I want there to be an agreement between you that the share should be a certain amount, 50 percent per person, according to what they done. Right. That's beyond the publishing and whatnot. Um, she wasn't cool with that. She was cool with the copyright. 